And now for our weekly news segment. Tony! Tony! Hey guys. <laughs> you guys have been mentioning Mexico, so... Um, <laughs> you have been ready. ready. Look at that, you're ready. This has been a marathon show know, already. As usual. It's as usual. Hour. How long is the news? About two hours? Or oh my we, god, we I can't. <laughs> In a minute. Two hours and one minute. And yeah. one minute this time. And wow, minute. You, you have to share your screen. I yes. Think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so... The reason why it wasn't working before is because I was on Linux and for some reason Linux doesn't allow me to share my audio. Be careful, right. blah, blah. There well, we go. We fixed it. We're good. Yeah, so we fixed it. I'm on Windows, so but for the people questioning, I do use Linux, don't worry. <laughs> um, um but yeah, so we fixed that and before we dive into the news, because we have a little bit of things to cover. Oh my god, there's a lot oh of Oh my like... god. No, it's okay, but you know, it'll be um quick. But before the links are in the description, so if you do want to check them out and or follow along, you can. Um so and subscribe, share, and like, because that helps a lot. All right. Um, but other than that, let's get into it. So unfortunately the narrow news. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so unfortunately, List Trust um, didn't outlast the lettuce. Um, Daily Star made a bet that the lettuce was going to outlast List Trust, the former prime minister of the UK, and the lettuce won. But fortunately for List Trust, she's now eligible for a taxpayer funded allowance of 129000 a year for life. Now, having said the, pres the president's um we now should talk about rishi sunak which is um the present prime minister of the uk and but the thing is he's a bit peculiar i think he's part of the wef and uh, i'm just gonna play this clip of him because it's, it's kind of just weird um i'm a cut addict oh, a total cut addict yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Hello. And then I want to play this one as well because it was really interesting. Where is it? Uh, yeah, this. I have friends who are upper class. I have friends who are, you know, working class, but I'm not working class as well. <laughs> so he has friends in the upper class, but he doesn't really have friends in the working class. Um, so this guy has a lot of money and he has quite a bit of an influence. Uh, but now he's the uh, present. Uh, Prime Minister of the UK, and um, he just released a video. The first thing, that, one of the first things that he's done is to release a video on the CBDC. Oh boy! Um, should I play the whole thing or just yeah, like play uh... some of it? Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's get a taste. Yeah, let's get a taste. Today, of I'm proud to say that under the UK's presidency, the group of the world's seven most advanced economies, the G7, is launching a set of public policy principles for retail central bank digital currencies, CBDCs. Central bank digital <laughs> currencies could be a digital version of money, a bit like a digital banknote that could be used alongside physical notes and coins. Unlike most of the digital money people use daily today, it would be issued directly by a central bank, like the Bank of England in the UK. And governments and central banks across the world are working together, looking into what having a digital currency might mean in practice. This includes issues that people care about, such as ensuring users' money would be safe and secure, that it could work with other ways to pay, would be energy efficient and available to everyone. Energy efficient. <laughs> we keep going, man. We keep going. Oh, yeah. keep going? Okay. okay. Yeah, I, I want to hear it. Potential CBDC could offer businesses and consumers new ways to pay in the future. It's all part of the wider story of digital innovation that has delivered benefits to millions around the world and in the UK. The decision on whether to launch a central bank digital currency is for each country to make, and no G7 jurisdiction has yet made that choice. These decisions raise important questions about the reshaping of our economy, financial systems, and the way in which people interact with money and payments. That's why working together and careful evaluation with our international partners is essential. In the UK earlier this year, I announced a new joint task force between the Treasury and the Bank of England to look into a potential CBDC as a complement to cash and bank deposits. 
We're also hearing from firms, technology experts and others. Under the leadership of the UK, this report today will help support and inform exploration of CBDCs in the G7 and beyond. With these principles, the G7 is leading an important step change in the global policy conversation. The report covers a range of important matters, such as financial stability, cyber resilience, energy efficiency, privacy, inclusion, and tackling illicit finance. These factors should all be considered when designing and potentially delivering a CBDC that would be fit for the future. Our shared objective is to ensure that CBDCs would be grounded in long-standing commitments to transparency, the rule of law, and sound economic governance. The G7 will continue its work in this important area, working with others to enhance understanding and use of these principles. We're excited to be taking a leading role with G7 members in publishing this exploratory work, bringing money and finance into the 21st century. Beautiful. It's it's an information war, folks. It's it's them versus us. We got to get the information out on Monero, let the people decide. But it's pretty scary that most of the sheep are just going to go along with the CBDC, man. That's scary stuff. Indeed it is. And um, it's kind of interesting that he just came into office and one of the first things that he talks about is CBDC. Well, you know, I think this video is 11 months um, old, but he has been talking about CBDCs. Um, so it's quite concerning. But then let me show you one more video on this guy. And I'm just going to play the last part because it was just weird. Um, <laughs> I think I know what you're talking about, yeah. Yeah. With integrity and humility. And I will work day in, day out to deliver for the British people. <laughs> <laughs> Think, okay. Um, oh, I thought it froze. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's he just froze. his program froze. He froze. <laughs> no, like he fr he was just. I have no idea. I think like they told him a glitch I, in the AI. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think uh, Elon Musk, Optimus uh, <laughs> robot, just froze. <laughs> <Never ends. laughs> but it's it's you know he's kind of peculiar. So I'm not sure what's going to happen. Uh, I don't know much about this guy at all. I haven't really been following it. But God, man. That, that's the first thing he does is talk about CBDCs. Come on. Yeah, he's like, all right, so you're in office. What, what, are, you, what are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, nothing. I'm just doing some research. Nothing. Don't, don't why, why can't we have a Monero maximalist up there, right? I mean, come on. Well, you were oh. going to, but then they, you know, they didn't help you with it. <laughs> um, yeah. um, but now let's talk about something else. So in case Liz doesn't know what to do with her money, uh, she can actually go to a coming soon XMR sports book in Live Casino. Good segue. And uh, she can beautifully spend her uh, Monero. In case she's losing a lot of money, because she might not be great at it, she can just hold it. So that's also a possibility. And she can actually go on MoneroAdoption.org, which is a new website. And um, she can listen to Monero talk. To <laughs> oh, <cool. laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, to get more information about Monero, uh, more podcasts. Maybe she wants to, I don't know, get a wallet, uh, read the official Monero white paper. Maybe she wants to get a Monero job. I mean, you know, she I'm not sure, sure what she's doing right now, but she's the former prime minister. In case she's not doing anything, she can get a job in Monero. I <laughs> love it. What's, so what's the name of this website? MoneroAdoption.org. I love it. So who's behind, do, who, do we know who's involved? Who's the uh, creator? Whether I don't, I don't know, know FBI. Why? <laughs> well, what's the? Is there ah. an anonymous creator name behind it or no? I think so. Oh wait, maybe ten. I usually put it in the bottom. She Liz has music. I mean, she can listen to mm -hmm. narrow music, and so does Rishi. Um, no, there's no name okay. over here. We could, have, we could have somebody on the show, you know. To uh, I can. I don't know. I'll need to take. We can a find them and reach out to yeah. them. Yeah. All right. Um, but now let's move on, and let's talk about uh, Twitter. Of course, we're going to talk about Twitter because the first thing that Musk did when he took over was fire Parag Agarwal and CFO Ned um, Segal. Now, he posted. <laughs> that was funny. This. 
Let that sink in. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, it's not synced in, but. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, <laughs> also sync. <laughs> You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's kind of, I guess a bit off, but yeah, sorry guys. Um, I'm not sure of mine, but whatever. Um, yeah, so he actually bought Twitter and obviously some people are not happy about it. Oh, it kind of sucks that it's not in sync. Well, kind of a little bit. I'm watching it right now. Yeah, it's fine. It's just, it's okay. yeah, it's fine. But some people are not happy. If you look at the person behind, <laughs> look. That was funny. She, she does not. is not happy at all because this Twitter executive helped decide to ban Trump. Now, I'm not sure if this is true, but maybe on Monday you could be seeing a tweet from Donald Trump. I'm not sure if this is made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Halloween. Halloween. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe Halloween, or I'm not yeah. sure. Treat to the world. He's. <laughs> so I'm not sure, but who knows? Maybe. But it feels like if that happens and people are coming back to Twitter, it kind of feels like bringing dead people back to life. Oh my goodness. To put, you know, well, it's, it's Halloween. Amazing. Halloween. Elon is the man, man. I, I love that. I love that he's doing this. The guy is. Uh, I just don't know why he like he's a dogecoin like come on man just just get completely base and go go the monero route right like if you're gonna do it all an act right well i don't that's know the one revealing part <laughs> it's like yeah but he's dogecoin and not monero it's like yeah hey, what, what is what are where do his beliefs really lie if he's this you know true censorship resistant uh free speech guy mm -hmm. right I'm not sure. I mean, the guy is running like seven companies and he has like 10 kids from what I know. <laughs> <laughs> like he's very busy. So if he doesn't know about he's Monero, which... he's got to know, man. He's, he's got to know. Yeah. He knows crypto. He's, he's got to know. He's taking a good look at it. He's a busy guy. Yeah. Yeah. He's got to know. But if not, one of his 10 kids know <laughs> for yeah, sure. Eventually. Um, you know. Eventually. Right. Um, but. This is funny because now, so she works for CNBC and she tweeted that it's happening. Entire team of data engineers let go. These are two of them. Now, as far as I know, these are not actual Twitter employees. Um, they just had a box with computer hardware in it and pretended like <laughs> hired, as far as I understand. They're visibly shaken. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not sure if they're actual, you know, if they're actually... Um, if they used to actually work at Twitter, but let's also watch this. Should we watch this? No, it's. Uh, I just got let go. Uh... Uh, it's kind of long. Never mind. Uh, but I do want to play the final part. He, he was basically trolling the entire time. But let's play this part. Shouldn't you know use women's uh, locker rooms? Then awesome. I guess mission accomplished. We'll see. Listen, I got to touch base with my husband and wife. I got to get out of here. All right, <laughs> guys. <laughs> <laughs> so. He had to touch base with his husband and wife while, what's the other guy's oh. name? Ligma. John. It's amazing though, people just criticizing all, all the ex-Twitter employees. Oh my God. Right, but it's trolling it. so interesting. And also this guy was part of it as well. And he's like, name... really? I mean, that other guy obviously wasn't a real character, right? That was a, a joke. I don't know. I think it's a joke. Yeah, like yeah. there's no way his last name is that, <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, so it's a whole, oh, that's something else. So yeah, so this was um, this week's news about Twitter. Obviously there's a lot to unpack and people think that you can already say whatever you want on Twitter. He just took over. <laughs> like it takes time for him to update the policies or whatever he's going to do. So. Well, supposedly he has engineers looking at the code, right? To see if there yeah. was anything in there that was essentially uh, censoring people. Yeah, so I'm not, but he's gaining a lot of followers. Oh my God. He's, he just gained like a million. Can he just give one to us? Like to Monero? <laughs> just one. He has a lot of them. <laughs> just a million. Come on. Just one. Crossover. Just one. But comedy is now legal on Twitter and the bird is freed. All right. So mm. Elon Musk, Twitter. And then you have, you have Kanye that took over. Uh, what's the other one? What the podcast? No, the other. Oh, parlor. Parlor. Yeah. I don't know. Is that in your stories? Tony, did you have mm, that one? No, I don't. No. Oh wow, yeah. 
Kanye is we were listening out of to his, control. Like, interview we, last we were watching night. his uh, half of it because after a while, I was like, I need to stop. Literally made popcorn to watch it, <laughs> and it's. I highly recommend. It's actually it's pretty entertaining. entertaining. I don't know if you can sit through the two hours and a half of it. At, Kanye in one on, sitting, on Lex but... being interviewed by Lex. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah I've seen yeah. like a little bit. Yeah, I saw. I've been watching it in like segments because it's like. Yeah, it's, it's worth the watch. It's worth oh. the watch if you have a lot of time. But. Yeah, it's well. Well, the last one I think he posted was like seven hours. So yeah. this is okay. it's getting better. Uh, but yeah, yeah, no, I watched a little bit of it. It's interesting. Okay. Uh, but I haven't, I haven't covered that. Um, but let's talk about PayPal okay. now. If Liz wants to lose some of the money that she's getting, um, she can use PayPal. Um, so remember the the draconian clause PayPal added to its TOS a couple of weeks ago that will enable them to steal twenty five hundred from your account every time you post anything you, they don't like. Well, after the widespread criticism died down, they put it right back in. So let's dive in. Essentially, you know, people have been tweeting about it, closing their accounts, and then they made they made it in such a way that you couldn't. Um, close down your account because they're losing a lot of customers. Now, Charles V. Payne tweeted, my PayPal account is still open. I got this reply, which totally ignored what I wrote in my email to the company below. Now they are insulting my intelligence. So an acceptable use policy notice recently went out in error that included incorrect information. PayPal is not finding people for misinformation and this language was never intended to be inserted in our policy. We're sorry for the confusion. This has caused, never mind, they put it right back in. Um, never mind. So let's read about the user agreement that you have to agree or subject to if uh, you're using PayPal. I don't. My friend was actually trying to get me into PayPal two months ago, and I said no. So I guess I had some instincts. Um, but if you're a seller and receive funds for transactions that violate the acceptable use policy, then in addition to being subject to the above actions, you will be liable to PayPal for the amount of PayPal's damages caused by your violation of the acceptable use policy. Um, you acknowledge and agree that 2,500 US dollars per violation of the acceptable use policy, the prom promotion of hate, violence, racial, or other forms of intolerance that is discriminatory or the financial exploitation of crime so the moral of the story don't use paypal <laughs> don't use paypal done they're done yeah it's uh, but maybe you want to use kazakhstan's cbdc that's coming on bnb chain i hope that you don't but it's coming um so the national bank of kazakhstan nkb will integrate their cbdc on the binance chain um yeah, okay let's um less than a month later on october 6th the kazakh financial services authority granted binance a permanent license to offer digital asset services and provide custody services it was around this time that binance also signed a memorandum of understanding with local authorities in an effort to help fight uh, financial crime so cbdc is coming to kazakhstan They're building it on binance wow yeah, I know. Okay. But remember when we when we got the beer from that uh, stand, they were actually accepting uh, BNB. Really? BNB chain uh, related uh, crypto assets. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember. I didn't realize that. Uh, well, you were yes. talking a sh uh, shadow of uh, Wu Tang Clan. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're still you're still part of Wu Tang. <laughs> he was trying yeah. to join the group. Did we post that video yet? No. Uh, no, actually, we but... have. Uh, we haven't posted the one with the coconut guy. I mean, oh, we didn't make our mashup of the trip. No, I'm okay. waiting for the script. Actually, I just need to. Uh, I need to. I'm gonna uh, uh, tell you. Um, I need to finish the description for the mashup because I actually did finish it, and then Sunita needs to approve, and we'll post it. But the long form one, form one, I'll do that one as well. I have the short one right now, and then I'll work okay. on the longer one. All right, that's fine. All right. Yeah. Uh, but Nigeria and CBDC. So while others are striving to push for it and there's excitement, there's not so much in other parts where the adoption is 0.5%. I didn't know this, but actually Nigeria has a population of 217 million, which Romania has like 21 million. <laughs> so they have a lot of people and just 0.5% actually use the CBDC 
uh, the e-naira. Um, but a lot of people, 35% aged 18 to 60, had owned or traded cryptocurrencies um, this year. So, so this is a good. I mean, it shows people are are just opting for regular crypto and not really embracing CBDCs. Exactly what this thing says. Nigerians want crypto, but they don't want government-backed crypto. All right, people are smart. Yay! People are smart in Africa. So interesting. It's very interesting. This should happen international. Um, but since we are talking about foreign countries, let's talk about. China and their spies, which allegedly use Wasabi wallet mixer to pay Bitcoin bribes to FBI double agent. Uh, Peter said, stupid thing to get worked up over this Chinese spies were turned in by the people they tried to recruit. The privacy of their coin, coin simply wasn't relevant. And what taxations are, Wasabi coin joins is easy to figure out. The lesson here is China trusts Wasabi. That's good. Ah, uh, so that's Bobby, man. They, they, yeah, they get so, so these are the Chinese spies, I suppose, <laughs> <laughs> or the people that you know. <laughs> after they found out that uh, Elon Musk took over, there's a demographic that wouldn't like that. Uh, but yeah, and now let's talk about more things about Bitcoin. Let's talk about a uh, compliance. So. John Carvalho tweeted, please stop thinking that Ethereum nodes being OFAC compliant is a dunk on Ethereum. The same thing could have happened to miners or LN nodes. And someone said, LN nodes are major routers and are highly centralized. Um, yeah, and this is, this is something that we should uh, really worry about, uh, centralization of miners and like network nodes um, could happen. Could happen. No, Monero. Not in Monero. The Max, baby. <laughs> Not in Monero, but um, in Ethereum, as we know, it is possible because wow, 63... it's up to 63% now. Oh my gosh. I actually have a, a very good chart to show after this one. 63% of Ethereum transaction blocks are now OFAC compliant, right? Uh, but then if we look on this chart, OFAC compliant block visualization, the last 100 blocks, right? Oh, yeah. 99 out of 100 enforce OFAC yeah. censorship, but one doesn't. Well, so what are the arguments? What are, what are the people in Ethereum saying that are, are you know, arguing that this like, you know, effectively doesn't, doesn't mean anything that's not leading to some type of censorship? Do you know what argument they're making? Uh, I haven't spent a lot of time. I don't know. Anybody, anybody out there who knows, you can jump on uh, later. Let's, let's talk about this. If you, if you know Ethereum well, what's going on over there, I'd like to understand it better. Is it really as bad as it sounds? I mean, that's that's ridiculous. Uh, who cares some what they do? Oh, yeah. Okay. Who cares what they do or don't? Okay. And inside, it was inevitable. OFAC censors people from speaking about it. It's becoming a tool for CBDC. Check to include all blocks. It's the new number go up coin. I I I think so because Ethereum guys don't care about this. They know it's centralized as fuck, and that's okay. Um, yeah. So yeah, it'll be cool if we had someone from the Ethereum community to explain. Because um, obviously we don't like it, but maybe that they have some uh, different thoughts that they can tell us about this. Um. Someone made a joke in the comments that hashtag 174 is actually Vitalik's block. <laughs> yeah. It's Vitalik's Buterin's block, and the rest are just other people. Um, but yeah, and then I have the last thing. Yeah, the last thing. Um, so this is a video about, and it's in oh, Spanish. Oh, it has subtitles. Um, so this one is. Um, a video about the Bitcoin diploma that you can get in El Salvador. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, so kids are studying very hard to to learn about Bitcoin and what it does. So we can take a little bit of a peek over here. Uh, and they're teaching them about uh, halving and um, all these things. But I wonder, I, I don't think I mentioned this in this video, but 
I wonder if they actually talk about um, privacy on Bitcoin and how important that is, or you know, censorship, because they are talking about, as you can see here, uh, halving and things like that. But it's it's exciting to see, but it's also kind of scary. It feels like it's like shit, man. I hope they're teaching those kids the right <laughs> the right. <steps. laughs> All right, guys. Everything else is a shit coin. Right, <laughs> you just write that down and and uh, yeah, combat I'd, planner says, I'd, be, be, I'd love to get my hands on what that educational material is. So, yeah, like, is the word fungibility in there? That, yeah, that'll be interesting. I'm not sure. Maybe we can. Oh, wow, well, it'll be cool if we had one of the Mark Paul's to now. go down there and investigate this. What, what are they being taught? What are these kids being taught? Mm -hmm. That would well, actually be great. Gunbat said on that video, one of the kids says Bitcoin is anonymous. Oh God! All right. Uh, so I don't know, but I mean, honestly, it's an overall good thing because at least they learn about it. Yeah. Unfortunately, we'll have to learn the hard way <laughs> once they get out into the real world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Unfor yeah, unfortunately, but um, I mean, hopefully, they don't build a shell around what they learn. That's the only thing. Because yeah, if no, they just get that information, yeah, it's a good starting point. Yeah, it's a it's a good starting point. Yeah, it's... El Salvador, it's amazing what's going on down there. For better for better work, you know, I've always said I don't like the the way it was essentially done by fiat, but um, mm -hmm. it's it's pushing everything forward. Mm -hmm. It is for sure, and we need a uh, a Monero diploma. <laughs> Someone needs to do that in some country. <laughs> That'll be awesome. Um, yeah. But yeah, this was that was it. That was it for this week, guys. Um, awesome. That was everything. All right. Awesome. Yay. <laughs> it's it's already an hour. <laughs> there's, there's more and more. I mean, the thing is, these CBDCs are moving forward. And, and this is, we got to keep it, we got to like keep tabs on this. This is tremendous news. It's happening so fast. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, it's, that's why there's so much news. This is real. It's real. Really? Yeah. I thought this was imaginary. <laughs> <laughs> They're ramping up against us. It's true. Um, they are. But uh it's been a pleasure, guys. Enjoy your Halloween. Thank Have you. Have a good Happy Saturday. Halloween. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Tony, so much for your new segment. And we'll see you next week. Cheers. Cheers. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye, guys. Bye.